So first I'll give my introduction. So I'm Sumit Aroda and I'm working on this IT sector and having more than 10 years of experience. And on this cloud section, it's been more than seven years. I'm having expertise on Azure cloud, working on different infrastructure and platform related services and some of that software related services as well, right? So apart from that also, I do have uh, working as an uh, integration part on securities and the network experts as well. For today's session, which we have it today, we are going to cover uh, networking and the security component. So this course, right, basically that course we have designed it, we design it in a such a way. So if some person, if someone wants to elevate his career or her career in IT sector, right, and that too in a cloud computing, right, so we can, they can opt this question, they can opt this course, right, which is basically designed, it's a customized course designed for networking and the security engineer right so if any day-to-day -day activities a person is performing right so he can he can like uh, after this course he'll get to know uh, he will pretty much aware about the things like in a day-to-day -day live production environment the issues which is coming right so customizing we customize this content basis on that networking and the security responsibilities in the production and that company's uh, environment right now, uh, going further, right? So I'm going to give you a brief detail what we are going to cover in entire uh, session of that uh, uh, courses, which we are starting it from 12th of October. And it will be a weekend classes starting from 9 a.m. to 12 uh, p.m. on Saturday. And the same will go for the Sunday as well. So before going that, right, we do have our, uh, we do have our uh, websites where you can go and purchase courses there. There are like all that courses which has been there, right? You can offer them and then you can uh, go through that each of the section which you wanted. We have the different courses on WAF, Palo Alto, and then Wireshark and all that sorts, right? So you can opt any of them which you wanted to have. And if you wanted to go for our like uh, skills, like we, how the way we are conducting our sessions, we do have this uh, YouTube channel and where we upload the video on day-to-day -day basis or frequent basis. And you can go, you can see that, right? How frequently we are uploading it and then the way we are teaching it are in our CNN. So we do have two different YouTube channels. You can offer any of them. You can go through that. Now let's go back to one PPT section. So apart from covering that entire session, right? What major things we are going to include in our uh, sessions or in our uh, course, which we are uh, offering you, right? So it will be more than 50 hours of training on we are covering it it will be going to be plus 50 or nearby 50 it's going to be that way we are customized this course which takes almost 50 hours of training right and then after completion of the course right if you wanted to go for the interviews uh, to represent yourself in the company's area right you can reach out to us and we'll be there to support you in our interview right we can schedule our mock interviews where we can ask you the real-time questions which we supposed to come in the environment, right? Apart from that, also we will be having that study materials. You'll get to you're going to get the study materials, which the topic accordingly we are covering it, right? So that study materials, you are also going to get it. Once the session is got completed, right? And then let's say by any way you were not able to join that session, right? So we will be providing you a, a video section also, which you can kept it for your lifetime. And basis on your uh, part, you can use that recorded live video session. I'm going to help you out to set up your entire environment from scratch on that Azure cloud. So like as soon as I'm covering the topic, right, you, you can follow me and you can do your practicals because this session is majority of the sessions. We are going to do so much of the labs, so much of the practicals. We are going to do it uh, lesser the theory. And then most of the times you are doing that practical. So for that practical, I'll be helping you out to set up your Azure cloud account on that Azure environment. As I said, it's going to be a weekend classes starting at 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. If any practical shoes, you are facing it out in your demo section or in your uh, practical environment, you can reach out to us. We'll be helping out how to resolve that issues there. As I said, the mock interviews is also, we are going to cover it there. And now let me take you to that course content, which we are going to 
covered during that session. Let me open that course content there. So if you guys have basic knowledge of that networking, right? What I mean by that networking knowledge, if you have that basic CCNA level knowledge, right? Basic CCNA level, level of knowledge that how, what is IP addresses, how that IP addresses are working it, right? And uh, this uh, like uh, basic subnettings, if you have aware about that, right? That is enough for us. We are good with this course and we can go for further enhancement there, right? So that's only the requirement is here. Basic knowledge of the networking is needed. Apart from that, right, uh, if I'll go to, so we will be starting it as a basic of the Azure. I'm going to cover you out, uh, like what is that cloud computing and then characteristics of the Azure cloud. What's the benefit? Why we are asking you to use that uh, Azure cloud instead of going for other clouds also, which is there in the environment, like AWS is a, also a giant or that GCP is also there in a market, right? But we are recommending it here to opt for that Azure, right? So what will be the benefit of using that Azure there, right? I'm going to tell you each and everything uh, why that Azure is growing so faster compared to their AWS competitor and then GCP. I'm going to cover different IS related services, platform related services, IS means infrastructure as in service, platform as in service and software as in service. What these terminologies means in that cloud environment and how they are differing from each other. I'm going to cover each of them. These are the basic things, regions and availability zones, which Azure is offering and how worldwide they spread out their infrastructure, the underlying infrastructure throughout that across the world, right? I'm going to cover that as well. Then availability zone, how it's going to be different in the region, some of the basic experts of the Azure, geographics of Azure, and then how that network and that uh, segmentation is happening it, right? So what does it mean by that? If you're running your dev environment here, right? How you're going to segregate your prod environment with the dev one all that terminologies, all that factor, which going to be initialized this parameter, I'm going to tell you in that our uh, courses, which we are going to cover it, right? Then what will be, so if you're managing that environment on the cloud, right? Some of the responsibilities will be yours. And then some of the responsibilities is supposed to be managed by your cloud provider. One second. Now, what will be your responsibility? What will be as you are consuming that, right? You are, you are providing that applications on that cloud, right? So as a part of that consumer or as a part of that uh, deploying that services there, what will be your responsibility and what will be that Azure is going to help you out with that. I'm going to cover all that. Then further moving out, we are going to cover that governance and the management. We'll touch the base on that governance and the management. And then will we move further here? As a part of the automation, right? I'll going to tell you how we can deploy that. Just give me a second. I'm sorry for that background. So as a part of, so let's say we need to deploy multiple resources on the cloud, right? We deployed one resources and now we need to have the replicas of resources. The ask is we need to ask, uh, we have been asked to deploy a hundred of virtual machines or let's say hundred of storage account, right? So how are we going to do that, right? Because doing that manually, it's a very time taken, it's a lengthy task, right? So I'm going to tell you that there, the inbuilt template, right? That Azure resource manager, which comes in a rescue. We are going to tell you that how that arm is working, how we can create that template and how we can deploy it there. We are going to touch the base on RBAC also, which is a uh, role-based access control, how we can provide that access on that RBAC related things. Then assigning that user and the groups on the Azure also, creating that on that intra ID of that Azure, we are going to create that users and then group and then provide that access so let's say this is my VM, right? And I need to provide that access on my AD base, on my R bag, which was defined it there. So that group and the access we are creating it and then providing that access on that VM using that R back access there. Then custom rules also, we are going to create it there. Then blueprint is also one of the thing, right? So if you, let's say your industry, your company is following one, uh, I can say that the one parameter or one organization standard, right? See, if this is the case, let's just take an example of East US. I'm saying my resources, when I'm going to deploy it, it should only get deployed in a East US. 
otherwise the deployment should get failed right so that blueprint that policies azure policies how we can implement in our environment i'm going to cover it that also azure advisor so what happen whenever you deploy any resources on that azure right azure going to provide you the recommendation and the security of that recommendation and basis on that azure is going to assign some security score so recommended is 80% from the azure side how we can achieve that score of that 80% using that azure advisor or microsoft defender for cloud that also i'm going to cover it over here if we'll move further here then we'll come on the our major part which is the networking section we are going to tell you how we can isolate our network using that vnet here and what are the key components of that vnet and then how we can segment that a bigger network into a subnets and then how they are going to overlap with each other and then what is nsg which is the minimum layer of securities we are providing it how to control that inbound and outbound traffic of that what is that vnet peering express route to connect that on prem connectivity let's say you have some your organizations uh, architecture running it here right this is your on prem environment and you have all your infrastructure all your services running it here right how you can how you can have that connectivity when you move to the cloud right some of the application is running on that cloud and some of the application is running on on prem and then you want to have that integration both of them right how you can use that uh can how can connect that connectivity and how you can use that express route circuit to make that connectivity between each them then going to see that virtual network design uh like to designing your architecture right you need to have that hub and spoke kind of topologies like this is my hub environment this is my hub vnet where all that traffic which is coming it's terminating here and then how can i send my traffic to my spoke network this is my spoke network and how can i send my spoke network further here right so how can i send the traffic here how can i send it here how can i send my traffic here how can i place all my security related component inside my hub vnet i'm going to cover all that things in a brief in our session of there then most of important things which we see that vpn gateway how that vpn gateway we can design it how we can connect that uh ssl vpn how we can design that ipsec vpn right how we can design that ip related securities on the vpn that ssl vpn and then i'm going to cover all that things here right if i'll move further here again some of the touch base on the firewalls as well we are going to see the deployment on that azure firewall how we can configure the rule how we can configure our organization rule or how we can configure our application based rule or our subnets based rule on that azure firewall so we are going to see that deployment and then we'll be configuring that stateful and the state less firewall rules there what is ddos it's a it's a one of that services that providing ddos is distributed denial of services so let's say you have your organization running it here right and all of a sudden you started seeing that hits from across the world to your organization or your application which is running uh in the internet right on the internet so how you can protect your applications from being exposed to that ddos attack right for that they offer a very good service a ddos protections i'm going to cover that and then firewall deployment using their multiple ip addresses that's also we are going to cover it in our section then some more concepts of the traffic routing load balancing application gateway which is again a load 7 l7 load balancer how we can do that path based routing how we can do the route based routing how we can we can protect our application using that web application firewall so there are different web attack which is happening it here right how we can protect our applications by being exposed to this web attack right open web attacks like ssl in sql injections or scripting attack this kind of attack how we can utilize and how we can make sure our application which we are deploying it it's free from these kind of attack right so for that also azure have very good services they are offering a waf also and one more thing which we are going to cover it here a front door front door front door again a l7 load balancer which is capable of taking your traffic and sending it to the backend but it's a advanced version of application gateway so i'm going to cover that front door as well and then application gateway as well and then how we can route all that traffic right via private endpoint 
on that Microsoft Backbone network. So there are different services is there, right? All these terminologies, you will be going to be aware. Once we'll start that section, we'll, we'll start that uh, session on Azure networking and the security environment. VWAN is also one of the most uh, common things and that organization uses how we can do the deployment on using that VWAN. So let's say your company is having entire infrastructure as a centralized management in a East US, right? And you are running your application in different region of world, right? Let's say this is running in a North Europe and this one is running in a West Europe or somewhere across there, right? How you can make sure that whatever the connectivity is there, right? You can use that East US as a hub location and manage the content connectivity with the West US, manage the connectivity with the used uh, North Europe. So that thing we can do it, we call it as a VWAN, right? I'm going to cover how VWAN, we can configure it there and how we can use that, right? Then service endpoint is also one of the tags they are providing it there. Uh, the difference between service endpoint and that private endpoint. I'm going to show you a demo on service endpoint and private endpoint as well. If I move further here, again, security is one of the utmost priority for any organization, right? So we are going to discuss this in a, in a brief detail security and the compliance. I'm going to tell you that security center, that Microsoft Defender for Cloud, and then Sentinel, how we can put it our environment by same tool. Sentinel, we call it, it's Azure provided very good tool of SIEM, right? So we monitor a real time attacks, which is happening on our environment, right? It's an event-based monitoring. We are doing it there. I'm going to tell you that as well. Then threat detection, threat prevention, keyword, again, a platform-based services, how we can store our secrets, certificates, and key management inside the key vault. I'm going to tell you that in a deep way, on and all of these things, right, which we are discussing so far, we'll have that demo, less of the theoretical path and most of the aspects of these theories we are going to cover as a practical one. Then moving out further, we are going to touch that identity-based protection, which uh, Azure is providing, how we can use that identity-based protection, right? how we can implement that MFA in our Azure AD, that intra ID, right? So once you logged in, you need to provide some OTPs or you need to provide some two-way factor authentication, right? So how we can configure that, we are going to see that. Conditional access policies in the Azure AD, that also we are going to see. So let's say this person is sitting in a East US again, right? And uh, he's using a company laptop, right? So this is my laptop. Now what happened? This person is trying to log in it here, right? And now, some of that I'm, I'm configuring some policies in my East US location and saying that the person which is trying to access my environment should have the latest antivirus, latest antivirus there, right? Or I can say that OS related things, right? It should be having Windows 11, 11 right? Or Mac OS, this something needs to be had it there, right? So that things, the conditional access policies, if this person from the East US move out to somewhere in a West US, right? So I'm saying this person is only get the access when the person is having their base location as an East US. If we move out to East US, West US, deny that access here. So that conditional base policies I'm going to implement there. Azure AD also, I'm going to see that Azure AD there. And then data storage securities, like how we can store our data inside that and how we can store that securities, how we can provide the data encryption, right? When it's moving it, uh, and when the data at rest, right? So that also I'm going to discuss you with all in our detail. Then again, discussing more things on the network and the security, I'm going to touch the base on how we can best practices to deploy your security virtual machines, right? So when we deploy that virtual machine, we should have some best practices there, right? How we can configure that NSCs to allow that secure VM traffic, right? So if that person, if I deploy this virtual machine, right? The organization will not be suggesting you to have that access to everybody, right? So how can I protect that minimum layer of firewall security? How I'm going to that minimum layer of firewall security. So for that NSC, I can implement there. I can use that NSC and I can do that implementation for the VM and I can control that inbound, which means I can do that, right? As per my requirement, I can say, let's say this person, Bob, should have that access allowed. And when this person, Tim is coming it here, right? That person should get denied. Then we are going to see some discussion on the Kubernetes also. It's our orchestration tool services, how we can deploy that our services 
on that Kubernetes. So networking experts of that Kubernetes, how like what are the best practices when you deploy a cluster, right? So you must be uh, need to know some big best practices is there, right? Like how we can implement that Azure policies to restrict that port to port communication there, right? How we can use that uh, CNI there. There are multiple CNIs, all the terminologies, right? Which seems to be new to you. You will get familiar once we're going to discuss in our sessions there, right? Then integration with that Azure AD, with that AKS part. Then again, some of the experts, we are also going to test that networking thing on that serverless computing, right? Azure function is one of them, right? So what happened? You have your code ready. You have your code ready. And then you are saying, I do not have my infrastructure ready, right? Because to have that code deployment, you should have some infrastructure. Like if I'll talk about the data center, which you have seen it, right? You need to have that server there. You need to have that uh, router switches, right? All that and firewall also, you need to have it there, right? So this is my firewall. This is my switch. This is my router. And this is my server on which my application is running. So on-prem, typical on-prem infra, then only you will be able to deploy your code on that server. And then securities and routing that experts, you can manage by it. But now what happened? I just have my code there and I'm not sure how can I do the deployment. Then for that also, Azure providing a very good services, Azure function, you just bring out your code and do the deployment. It's a serverless computing functions. We are going to discuss that. Then we are going to discuss that APIs as well and API management. What API is a like, it's a collection of operations. We are doing it right. And how we can implement that inside that Azure API management and how we can do that tweaks on my inbound and outbound request. When the request is coming to access that server, right? How can I modify that different experts of my request? Like the header queries, things, all that things, right? And when it's going to the outbound again, I can do some tweaks here, right? So let's just see, let's, let's just uh, tell you a, uh, a short example there, right? So let's, we have that application, which is there, right? So let's say I configured some video application there. This is my video application, right? And now what happened? The person, this actor, right? This actor was trying to access this video services on the internet or uh, from the internet, right? So from the internet, the request will reach out to API gateway, right? API gateway. And from that API gateway, I can do the tweaks like the way I want to do it, right? I, there are multiple policies you can implement on that API gateway. And once the request reach out to the video, now think about this user is my subscriber, right? He paid the price to access this video. Now I'm, when the request going back, right? I can do the tweaks and I can say, give that a full video to that customer. So like, because he's a subscriber, right? So I can provide the full video to this customer now using that tweaks on the API gateway. Now at the same time, again, this person come, now this is not the subscriber anymore, right? Now I want only share that video for the 10 second or remove my water logo, which is coming it here, right? All the things I can do that tweaks on my API gateway. So it's a very good tool to manage your APIs and to expose your APIs to internet. We are going to discuss that. Then some of the experts on the Azure AD, PIM configurations, how we can elevate our access, how we can uh, see that like this person, I want that access to contributor and he can elevate to that owner level. We are going to discuss there. Then some of the things on the backup disaster and recoveries there, we are going to, if anything happened, right? How we can recover our sites there. So if my, uh, my application is running in a East US, right? And now what happened? Anything, something happened to this East US location, right? Let's say some disaster happened to this East US location. And now this East US application is no longer available. This East US application is no longer applicable, available, right? Now in that case, there is a complete outage. It's a complete outage. Your application is not accessible anymore, right? But this is not the real scenario, right? This is not the, what company do. They create a DC and DR reason, right? DC and DR reason. So if something happened to your primary reason, right? Typically the DR reason will come in our rescue. And then every traffic which is coming from the internet should get divert to DR reason. And the meantime, the traffic is routing to DR reason. You can look for the root cause, what happened, which brings down your application down in the East US, and you can make your application up again. So that setups, we are going to see it there. Most of you guys will be seeing that these are the new terms for them. But yeah, I'll tell you that cloud computing is, I can say that it's a, it's a guarantee to elevate your career in the IT sector with the cloud computing, right? It's one of the most 
uh, growing technologies in nowadays, right? Companies are frequently moving their infrastructure from on-prem to the cloud uh, because of that maintenance and the cost aspects, right, which is there. So that's the reason you are seeing very boom happening in the cloud environment, right? Nowadays, even Azure itself seeing its growth more than 300% in every quarter, right? They have that capture the environment of 26%, right? So Azure is growing very fast and then they have their technical expertise there. They have, since uh, Microsoft is a technical company, right? So they provide very good integrations with the technical tools which Microsoft owns, right? So that's also one of the important factors. Azure is having so much growth in recent years. Then logging and the monitoring, right? When you have your application deploy, you should do the monitoring. So if any change is happening, it, right? I can see that who made that changes, right? If all of a sudden I started seeing attacks on my environment, so I can log that and I can see that what happening to my organization, I can remediate that issue, right? Quickly remediate the issue there. So for that, you need to have some sort of information, right? You need to get some details from there. So that things we can do that using Azure Monitor, LOL, Analytics, and Network Watcher. All that things we are going to discuss in our environment, in our demo, or in our sections, which we are going to start from 12th of October. Then auditing the things, right? If you're deploying some resources, it's not like just deploying that, right? Because deployment is very easy in that cloud environment. But as soon as the cloud environment is growing, right? You are also seeing that cost factor, which is coming part. Cost factor is also going to be rising here. So now what happened? Companies are also saying to reduce the cost up to a level so they can they can handle the burden of managing that resources on that cloud, right? How can you do that cost optimization activity? And you will only be able to do it once you aware, you once you know about that uh, resources which is deployed, right? So for that auditing, cost optimizations, all that such we are going to discuss it in our sections there. So that's pretty much about the content of that course, which are going to discuss it there. Let me go back to my PPT there. Now what happened? Let me put this in a, so once this course will get complete, right? You will be able to, I can say that you'll be having a command on that network engineer of that Azure, or you will be going to get the command on that security engineer. So these are the some things which you are going to get it once that course will get completed, right? So that's what I was saying, right? Security engineer, you are going to get that command. How you can manage the day-to-day -day. most important things we are going to discuss it here, day-to-day -day activities, right? In a live scenario, the day-to-day -day things which is happening in an organization, right? How you're going to manage that. So that thing you're going to get to know after completing this section here, right? After completing that course here, you're going to see that network engineer, what's the role of the network engineer and the responsibilities and then security engineers rules of that responsibility. Now, why the admin is here, right? Because to deploy anything, to deploy any resources, you need to have that fundamental knowledge or you need to have that administrator knowledge of that. Because without knowing that how we can deploy that resources, you won't be able to manage the network and the security aspect of that. So for that thing, we are also going to touch base of the administration and then network and then security engineer. Now what happened next here? We'll see some demo, a small demo on that Azure part, and then we'll move to our demo uh, topic here, right? We're going to see some practicals there, and then we'll see how we can do that deployment on that Azure cloud for that today's demo section. Now, if you remember, right, I told you initially that uh, there are some IS related services, there are some PaaS related services, and there are some software related services. Now, what happened? Let's say your, your company, right, your entire application is running in a on-prem infra. So this is my on-prem infra, right? Let's say you are managing, you, are, you, you bought some land, right? And now you are, you are setting up your company and now you've done with that company setup, right? So let's say this company is running in a Pune location in India. And now what do you need to manage it there, right? For that application to be work properly. It's just not about the code. It's just not about the one thing, two things. You need to manage multiple things over there. You need to have that command on the networking. You need to have the command of the storage of your application servers. Also the way from that application can run. 
if you're running some virtualization of your environment, you need to make, make sure that hypervisor and that virtualization content should be there. OS related things, you need to make sure that OS is hard and, and then any vulnerabilities which is coming, that OS will be able to manage that. If you're running some middleware, like proxies, we are running it in a in our scenarios, right? Or in our company's environments, how you can, you need to deploy that middleware also. Runtime to make sure your application run properly. You need to run that runtime and data application is also one of the component. So that entire thing, right? That entire thing, you need to take care of that. For networking, you will be having a network engineer. For server, our server storage, storage admin will be there, right? Uh, for servers and then for, let's say db is also there for db you will be having a db database admin right db admin so what i mean to see here for everything right for each layer here you need to have some persons dedicatedly owning that responsibility right now when you move to that cloud infra now you move your entire infra to the cloud there will be some difference going to be happen now if you're opting for that infrastructure as in service right there are sub services on that azure or in all cloud, right? Which categorize as an infrastructure as in service, platform as in service, software as in service. Infrastructure as in service, you're deploying that resources on the cloud and then you will only be able to manage, you should only be worried about these things. These other things, right? It's going to be managed by the cloud. Networking experts, now you don't have to worry about how my uh, routing will happen, how my traffic will reach out inbound and outbound, that thing. Azure is going to manage it there. Storage also, they are going to provide you a platform where you can host your applications and then uh, manage that storing of that capabilities using the storage account. Virtualization also, you can do that. Server also, that Microsoft is going to do that. So for infra IS services, right? You just have to worry about these things here. And now these things, right? If you are saying it, no, I want to maintain my security of my environment, right? Let's say the banking customers, you are having it, right? So for that also, you can do the customize here. You can go for that OS related things. You can, you will be managing that middleware, runtime, data and applications there. Now, this is about that infrastructure as in services. If I'll give you some example on that infrastructure services, like we see, we are aware about that VMs, which is virtual machine. It's a type of infrastructure services. We see about that application gateway, which is, App Gateway, it's a load balancer, right? It's again a IES services, right? Now then what is platform? What is platform? If you look at the name, right? It's itself making a sense that if you have that things ready, right? You have your application code ready and you have your data ready with you and you don't have to worry about the rest of the things, right? Like the runtime, middleware, operating system, securities, networking, storage capabilities, right? all that things, you don't have to worry about that. You, you just want that application and the data is ready. Now I want my application to be hosted there or my application to work, it is there, right? So then platform as in service, another way they are offering it platform. Some of the services they are offering it, you can use them as a platform, right? And then you can make your application up and running. If I'll give you an example of this application platform, right? Platform services, like storage account is there, right? Storage account, we, we are, the Azure is providing you that platform of storage account and you can host your multiple data, right? Whether it's a uh, following a pattern or not following any pattern, you can store any data which you want to store it inside that storage account. So where we are storing it, we are storing it inside that Azure cloud. And who is going to provide that storage account? It's going to provide that Azure. Now, I just need to bring my code, bring my data and then do that deployment. That's it. Function lab. Right again, Azure function or function app. It's again serverless thing. It's again a platform as in services which they are offering it. Right, you just need to deploy your code and things are ready in a few minutes. So that's what like there are multiple services. There are more than two hundred services Azure is offering. Right, and you can go for them. Now you are saying I want to consume your application. I do not have code. I do not have any things over there. Right now I want that your infrastructure, your platform, and your software as a services, cloud should manage, right? Then I just need to go for their software services and I can utilize them like that. In the organization, you must be seeing that SharePoint is there, right? Or to give you an example, right? We use that Outlook, Outlook mailbox, right? 
it's a kind of saas services you are not managing anything for that outlet you are not worrying about anything whether it's a networking is working storage is working or not you just using that services and you are paying to microsoft for that so that's what the entire thing from top to bottom that cloud is managing it there right so that's what we call it software as a service there now as i said right azure is going very quickly right azure is having their presence across 140 plus countries they having 60 regions in which their data center currently exists right so anything where that if any resource you deploy right let's say you deploy in one virtual machine so our replicas or your a uh, uh, meta 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 image right going to be configured on this data center that data center our uh, underlying infrastructure is going to be deployed inside this data center there so for that they have more than 60 regions 200 services which we talked right like the different azure function storage account and many more right 200 plus services it's very big cloud right or it's very big offering that azure is giving to us right now look at this diagram they have their presence across the world central us east us india south south india right inside the europe also china also and throughout the us region they have their big presence right so it's a very very growing cloud that if you look at the quadrant of that azure right it's growing like a wave this way right they are going in a jump off this way they are they are they are just going very too fast right when the cloud started that uh, one of the major giant which is already there in native base right they were having that 31% of the market capture now azure is close to them they reach out to 26% of that market capture and they are it's quickly growing bigger organization is opting for that azure because of their different integrations being a technical companies and then many such regions are there so that's the thing we are saying it azure is important or azure is good to go i'll go further here so now it's time to do some practicals right we discussed too many things we discussed course content we discussed that some of the introduction of our azure infra azure environment right now let's do some practical so what i'm going to do it here right i have some basic diagram prepared here so what i'm going to do it here on that infrastructure on that azure cloud i am first going to deploy a virtual machine there i am first going to deploy a virtual machine so this is my virtual machine i am deploying a virtual machine and then i am going to configure a network security group what this network security group it's a minimum layer of security you can provide to your azure infrastructure network security group right it's a minimum layer of security you are going to provide in your azure infrastructure now to deploy that virtual machines right to deploy a virtual machine you need to have your virtual network in place now what's that virtual network this virtual network let's say if you're configuring your environment inside the cloud right if you are configuring your environment inside the cloud all that communications currently happening on that across the world it's happening on that ip addresses it's happening on that ip addresses now to deploy that virtual machine we need to have that virtual network in place right so for that virtual network we are going to deploy a vnet here which is going to provide you a private private ip addresses there are some public ip addresses right it's a discussion we are going to discuss in a detail later on on the course and some private ip addresses so to deploy that vnet right you are going to get the private ip addresses from there right which is mandatory because once you deploy that virtual machine you will be getting some private ip addresses like 10.1.1.1 at the same time you are also going to get the public ip addresses of that vm which you are going to access from the internet right so the vnet which i am going to deploy it it's going to assign me a private ip addresses and using that vnet right i can do the segmentation right what the segmentation means to me let's say i deployed a vnet here i deployed a vnet and i want that vnet all my production related application all my production related server should get deploy here inside this vnet so i can deploy inside this vnet i do another deployment for my vnet 2 and i say the dev related component should get deploy inside my vnet 2 now by default vnet to vnet communication is not allowed inside that azure right 
now the dev and production entirely segregated from each other now but this is one this is one one thing for me right this is one organization which is having their production environment which is also having a dev environment so you can have that connectivity in place we can discuss that later on but yeah that segmentation of the things right you can do that now again once you deploy that vnet there right once you deploy that vnet they're going to get the ip address 10 dot so let's say you can select the maximum ip of 16 it's a cidr notation it's a cidr notation right it's all that ccna level things i'm discussing it here so that cidr notation which you are going to get it by slash 16 you will be getting 65,534 ips which is very big right 65,534 ips which is very big now how can i do that right let's say inside this environment i want that inside with this 65,000 ips i want allocate i want to allocate 254 ips to my web app web server 254 ips to my dev server or 250 ip for my tv server just think about this scenario right i want these to be happening there now what happened and I also i want that web server should not communicate to the db server db server should not communicate to the uh, dev server and again these things deployed inside the one vnet right so then to this to to segment to segment it further right to segment a bigger ip into a smaller smaller ips i need to create a subnet i need to create a subnet there right so now what i'm going to do it i'm inside the vnet i'm going to create a subnet I'm going to show you all that in a practical, but before that, let's just discuss the topologies here, right? So, so far we created a VNet here. We created a subnet. Now I can use this VNet subnet to deploy my virtual machine there, right? Now, once the virtual machine is deployed, I'm going to configure a web service inside the virtual machine. I'm going to configure a web service so that once you go in a browser, right? And you'll type that HTTP not the HTTPS because I do not have that certificate HTTP and then public IP of your VM. Let's say I got this public IP there, right? I got this public IP. So if you'll access that HTTPS, HTTP from internet, you will get some kind of response from there. So that's what I'm going to configure inside my virtual machine. We call it as a web service there. Now for the person, right? Who's sitting on the internet, this person, Bob, who's sitting on the internet, he's trying to get the access of this web services, which is configured here from the internet, right? He's going to get that access from the web service on that virtual machine. And I'm saying it, this Bob is allowed to get that access, but at the same time, another person which is coming, right? This Tim, I'm saying it, Tim should not get the access of this uh, virtual machines, which have that web service configured. Then how can I manage that? Uh, access right for one person the same way he's coming it here and i'm saying it deny the access for the other person i'm saying it allow that access there comes the network security group i can write some inbound outbound rule there and then we are going to get that level of securities there as well now let's do one thing let's move to the cloud and we'll do that for the things there once we're done with this demo section we're going to start that QA and you guys can ask your questions if you have any right related to the demo and you'll we'll get any questions for this course. We're going to start that. Let me log into my So I'm inside my cloud environment, right? I logged into my cloud. Now what happened? Let me first search that as we discussed, right? Let me search the VNet here, a virtual network here. I can just type that virtual network. It's a global search bar. I can type that virtual network here. And then you can see that section here, right? Virtual network. Click on that virtual network. I'm going to create a new one here. Now Azure is offering two kinds of subscription, right? One is free trial and one is pay as you go. 
since my free trial is not anymore, I'm using pay as you go. What does it mean? So whatever the resources I'm going to deploy it there, right? In my cloud. And the way I'm going to use it, for that only I need to pay the prices. So let's say, I'll show you in a while. If I'm going to deploy one virtual machine, right? And then expected price, cloud Azure is going to show me like for deploying a virtual machine, you need to pay 14K INR or 15K INR. This is not that upfront cost you're going to pay. It's an assumption of the cost. But if you are saying, instead of using 24 into seven, that virtual machine, you are only using two hours in a day, right? So for that part only, you need to pay it there. And for our demo, for your practical, I'm going to set up a free trial account where you're going to get a $200 US dollar credit. And that is enough for us to do any practical, right? You will hardly be able to spend it like 50, $60 maximum. That's it, not more than that, right? Not to deploy any resources inside the cloud, you need to have that resource group created. It's a, it's this what resource group, right? It's a, it's a logical. We have resource group. You won't be seeing it in a real scenario, but it's a logical aggregation of your resources. So, this is my resource group. A bigger picture here. A resource resource group. Inside the resource group, I can deploy my uh, infrastructure. There. Let's say I'm deploying a VM. I can deploy inside my resource group. I'm deploying my VNet. I can do it inside my VNet. I'm going to deploy another thing like a storage account. I can do inside my resource group. Now, if you want to deploy another resource group or another services, you can create another resource group here, right? And they deploy these types of stuffs here as well, right? So it's a it's a putting every resources inside one bucket. We call like a resource group there. We we'll just give you a lemon language answer here. Now, let's create that. Resource group, it's very simple to create the resource group. Either you can go in the global search bar and search for the resource group, or either you can just put the name here and then type the name. Let's say I'm typing that name as in, I'm typing a name as in demo. I'm typing a name as in, one second. So let me put that name of the resource group as in demo. So we are just doing a demo. I'm putting a demo one here. That's it. That resource group got created. Now I need to provide some virtual network name also, right? I need to provide the name of my virtual network here. So let's see, I'm providing a name of my virtual network as in demo VNet, right? And then I'm going to deploy that inside the central India. So this is this is going to be reason where my virtual network will be going to be hosted. I'll put the next. If you want to enable the encryption, so whatever the traffic, right? If you deploy that virtual network there and whatever the traffic flowing it, so this is my virtual network. If any traffic which is coming inside your virtual network, right? This is VNet or any traffic going outside the virtual network, right? You want to enable the encryption. So any traffic which is going, if any person, the third person is sitting it here and they want to read that traffic, what's going it in and out they won't be able to do it because that traffic is encrypted now. And that what this person, the hacker is going to see it now, it's going to see it like this way, hashing form, right? This way. So no one will be able to read that data here. If you want to enable that encryption, you can do that, right? But for the demo section, I am not going to do it here. This Bastion service, Azure Firewall, Bastion is also, I'm going to discuss later on, but just leave that as it is. So DDoS, right? If you want to enable the DDoS on this VNet level, what does it mean? So I'm seeing it, I'm deploying a VNet here. I'm deploying a VNet here, right? And now I'm deploying multiple resources. I'm deploying five VMs inside my VMs, inside my VNet, right? And I'm this, this person is saying, enable the DDoS protection here, right? This option is showing to me, enable the DDoS. Now if I enable the DDoS on the VNet level, right? So let's say I enable the DDoS here. This is my DDoS, right? Now, whatever the resources you're going to deploy inside that VNet, it's all going to be covered for the DDoS plan. If anything happened, any abnormalities, any abnormal request started coming on this VM, right? DDoS quickly will automatically come in a picture and they will mitigate your issue. They will trigger the response. They will trigger that incident and then they are going to mitigate the issue which is happening to your VMs. Now, what I mean by that, right? let's say on day to day scenarios, these VMs are expected to get 100 requests per second. Now, if DDoS is happening, which means 
from across the region you started getting the hits there now all of a sudden you are seeing that instead of getting 100 requests per second you started to getting 100k request per second now 100k i i mean sorry i 100k request per second now right now this vm is only capable of managing 1000 requests now and now it's sending 100k request per second now ddos will come it will see if these requests are genuine or these requests are expected to come on this vm then only these will, this request will get allowed otherwise ddos is going to automatically block that request from across the word which is coming it here that's what ddos will do it's very good feature but it's very expensive service they are offering it if you are going for the ddos you need to pay a 300 dollar $3, which means if you opt for the ddos the next month you need to pay the three thousand dollar first month is free and then from the next month you need to pay the three thousand dollar as a fixed price so let's just see i'm not going to select that and then this is that vnet right this is the vnet and the subnet i said so now i'm taking a bigger subnet which is 10 0 0 0 slash 16. now how much ip is i'm going to get it i'm going to get this much of the ip from this bigger subnet it means like i'm creating a I'm creating a room. So this is, let's say I bought this plot, right? And I, I'm now creating my house here. I'm creating my house. This is my uh, area of my house. Let's say it's like uh, 10 feet long and 20 feet. Right. Right. So now I created this plot here and now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to build my house here. Right. Now what I can do it here inside this bigger ring, uh, there are inside this uh, plot, right? I will be having one bedroom here. I will be having one dining room. I will be having a kitchen here, right? And so on. There are other things are also there, right? I will be having all these things here. Now, I want that. How can I use that bigger plot into a smaller, smaller? Because there will be a divider section between that, right? There will be a wall in between of them. There will be a wall in between of them, right? So I'm breaking a bigger plot into a smaller, smaller segment to use of to use as per my accordance. Now, the same thing I'm going to do with the subnet. I bought a bigger thing here. I bought a bigger thing here, right? And now, okay. I bought a bigger thing here, right? That bigger thing is the bigger plot is my, this VNet, which is that VNet subnet, right? This is that VNet subnet here. And now I'm saying it, I need to use it as per my contest because that uh, buying a bigger plot is not making a sense until and unless you're not doing anything there, right? Until and unless you're not doing anything there. Let me close this section here. Until and unless you're not going to do it, right? So for that, to break down these things into a smaller reason, we create a subnet. And in the networking sections, we call it as a subnetting. Take the same reference, right? Like the way we were dividing a bigger plot into a smaller, smaller, a dining room, a bedroom, right? The similarly, we are going to do it with my VNet here. To break this thing into a smaller, smaller room, we call it as a subnet. So now if I'll create the subnets, again, very easy to create that subnet on the cloud, right? You just need to put the name here, right? I'm just going to put that, let's say I'm putting a name, a VM subnet. I'm putting a name of VM subnet, right? Now, if they are saying to you, right? They are, Azure is saying to you, you have a IP range of this much. This is your VNet IP range, which is the total range of your IP, right? How much IP you want to use it for this subnet? Again, just give up. So this is VNet. Now this room, how much, how much space you want to allocate for this room here? I'm saying it, I just want five feet and five feet. Similarly, I'm saying it, I, within that 65,000 IP, I just need 256 IPs for my VM to be deployed. And for rest of the IPs, right, 65,000 minus 256, the rest of the IPs, which will comes to here, right, 64, 750 IPs, I'm going to use for my other purpose. Let's say I am going to use it for my database. I'm going to use for my other things, right? There are multiple things you can do it, right? But for this thing, I'm going to use only 256 IP. So that's what they are seeing it here. Now, let's just 
don't think uh, i mean don't consider other experts we are going to discuss one by one every things every stress there right the subnet delegations network policies for the private endpoint because if i'm going to tell you that you won't be able to go to get it there this needs the detailed uh, overviews and then working on the services the nat gateway again also if you want to attach your communication with some nat gateway so you can do that they so just create that very simple i created a subnet with the name of vm subnet a default subnet which comes with that azure right if you are creating a vnet a default subnet is also going to be created so if you want to delete you can do that delete here but i'm not deleting it and then other subnet i created a vm subnet right now with 65256 ips these ips got allocated 256 and 256 the remaining ips is still there right now move next tag also very important right if you are running that cost optimization activities or any other things right let's say you have you did the deployment to the azure cloud now and now what happened you have 2000 resources running in your cloud environment 2000 resources running in your cloud environment now what happened cost is seeing it like you are let's say you are getting that 50k dollar 50k dollar every month for that cost of that azure right now company came to you and this is what happened in a real scenarios also right organization reaching out to you and they are saying hey this cost is very high for us right you need to reduce some cost there you need to reduce some cost there so what you go what you are going to do it there right you can't simply go and delete that production things over there right so for that i'm providing a tag let's say i'm providing a tag i'm saying it environment as in environment as in dev so these resources belong to dev now i can easily look for them which of them is uh, i can use them and which i can delete it there right so for that part it's just the one case i can use that uh, tags there are multiple things to use that tags also so the deployment for my virtual vnet is getting started now it's very quick right you can see the deployment already is done the demo vnet got created here now what else i'm seeing it here the resource group dns server name right and then other things also i'm going to see it there right like the address space you see that address space the total address space is there right now inside that i'm going to see that what is the name of my subnet also which i configured there right so that way the vnet deployment is success now let me go and do that deployment of my we call it as a so if i'll go in address space show you subnet right you can see the two subnet got created here one as in default another was in vnet now i'm going to deploy my vm inside this subnet here i'm going to deploy my vm inside this subnet again very simple go in a virtual machine search for the virtual machine click here now create a virtual machine there create a virtual machine there again as i said right to create any resources on the cloud you need to have a resource group but the resource group already created right i want to use the same resource group the demo one on which i created my vnet i need to provide the name of my vm right so let's say i'm using that this is my app vm this is my app vm right i'm just telling that app vm i'm hosting it in the central india availability options again availability zone if you want to i'm going to tell that availability zone in our later sections right in our classes but just think about right how you are going to make sure that your vm is available right let's say i am deploying that in a central india right and this central india vm is ready it's working it here right this vm is ready in my india region right now if anything disaster happen to this india region how my vm is still going to be accessible to me how my whatever that stuffs is there inside my india vm right i still want to access that because this is my production vm right it's having that impact there right how can i use that so for that you can use the zone categories so any vm which you are deploying it any reason right a replica uh, you can say a duplicate vm is also going to be created inside the underlying infrastructure of azure so if anything happen to the india reason and you have a replica in east us reason quickly you can divert your traffic to the east us and you can access that so that's what availability zone concepts and other specs will come it there right now what happen if i'll go further down here
security type. Let me select that standard here. Now they're saying which image you want to deploy it, right? If you deploy anything inside your, either you can do a uh, windows based deployment, either you can do Ubuntu based deployment, right? You need to provide some images there, right? If you're doing that windows, you need to provide that windows iOS, right? The so same thing they're asking it here, which image you can opt it here. There are so many images in that marketplace. We call this as a marketplace where we can opt for anything you want to do it, right? So let's say I'm going to opt for the windows. That window service is there, right? Let me select that window server there. Let me select that window server there. I'm saying it window server there, right? I'm using Windows Server 26 data center. Uh, architecture same like we have that in our laptop or in our desktop. Uh, X64 or ARM64, you want to have it, right? You can use it there. Now, like we use our laptop, we have the different memories and different uh, ZB of RAMs over there, right? The same way you can opt for here also. You can use that two CPUs and eight gigs of memory. And this is going to cost this much as in India. Indian rupees, right? If you opting for one CPU and 3.5 gigs of memory, you need to pay the different thing, right? The same way, all that sizes and the price is going to be very, the number of compute you are going to use it. We call it as a compute there. So see how the cost is getting different, right? If I, if I'm opting it for two gigs, eight gigs of two CPUs and eight gigs of memory, it's costing me a uh, estimate cost of $13,000, 13,000 Indian rupees. And if I'm costing me four CPU, four CPU, the cost is going to be changed there, 25,000, right? See how quickly the cost is changing as per my increasing that compute resources there. Now I need to provide that username and password. The same way we provide that for our laptop login and desktop login. Let me provide that AZ admin and I'm saying it AZ admin, one, two, three, four. AZ admin, one, two, three, four asking for one special character is also need to be there so let me provide that no i'm not going to anything here now go in a dex disk it's again the same thing right whether you want to attach that uh, uh, ssd to your laptop or hard disk to your laptop or the other options which is there right so let's say i'm just saying for premium this is costly, but for just deployment, I'm using that. And if you want to attach, so let's say your disk is full, use that 100 GB of your space in your laptop. And now you want to use another hard disk. The same way you can do that here. You can attach or create a new disk and attach it. And then you need to pay that for that part. Now I created a demo VNet, the same thing, the demo VNet. I'm going to use a VM subnet inside my demo VNet. Now next, keep that everything as in default. I'm going to tell you what CI CSPM security posture management of the cloud, which is Microsoft defender for cloud, right? I'm going to tell you that now advanced and then tax. I'll keep everything as it is default and then review and create. It's going to cost me an estimate price of 16.14,000 to 822 rupees, right? This is if I am going to use 24 into seven of my VM, right? And if I'll use one hour only, right? And let's say in a day I'm using one hour for my VM or two hours in a day, then I, I need to pay that much of the cost only to the Azure cloud. It's not about, it's not that upfront cost. Like the way I told you, if you're opting for a DDoS, you have to pay 3000 USD dollar to the Azure, right? It's not like if you're using it or not using it, you are getting man, minimum use of DDoS or maximum use of DDoS, you have to pay that $3,000, right? But VMs and other things is works on that, the how you are going to utilize it. If you're utilizing on that higher environment, uh, very, very big, I mean, utilization is happening it here, then you need to pay that in that way. Now VM deployment is complete. Click on go to resource now. And then settings, all the things you can do it, right? Now what I need to do it here, I need to connect to my VM. It's very easy. Simply go in a connect, right? Download the RDP file here. Download the RDP file here. Uh, 
RDP file is downloaded. Let me open that RDP file here. Now what happened? I'm just so this is public IP of my VM. This is public IP of my virtual machine, right? It's going to it's assigned when we I deployed that virtual machine. It's automatically assigned this IP. You can customize this IP, right? If you're saying I want to do that uh, public IP, which is I already have it in my organization, right? So you can do that. You can do that also, right? Now what happened? Connect. Click on connect. Now, if you see that it's not allowing me to connect, at last I'm going to get the pop-up error. At last, I'm going to get that pop-up error there. See, the remote connection cannot be established. Why? Because if you look at that networking part here, right? There is a network security group. There is a network security group is there. This app VM NSE, which got created when we deployed this virtual machine. And here, I'm not doing, I'm not allowing any port, right? So for inbound, what I'm doing it now, I'm trying to get the access of my VM. I'm trying to get the access of my VM. Okay, so this is me. I'm trying to get the access of my VM from internet, from internet, right? And at the NSC, there is no allow or deny is happening it, right? By default, if you're not allowing, allowing anything here on that NSC, right? Everything gets denied. So what I need to do it here, I need to allow my rule here. I need to create a rule which will state that for my IPs, right? For my IPs, allow that rule so I can access that virtual machine there. Let me go and add that rule there. So it's very simple to add that rule. It's asking what source port you are going to get it, right? It's a dynamic port. I can come with any port. Destination, it will be IP address. Now I need to get my IP address, right? Instead of going for that, let me search my IP address here. What is my IP? So let's just checking that IPv4. That's what we need to have it in my NSE rule. Or we can do another thing. Instead of putting that one IP here, right? I'm going to see it allow for everyone. Allow for anything. So if you are accessing that, if I'm accessing that, right? Any other person is trying to accessing that, they all will be able to access this VM. So sport range also I'm saying it allow for everyone. The tactic is correspond to anyone, any protocol. If I want to TCP, UDP, but let's say if I'm saying it, I need to allow only for 443. I can do that, right? Or I need to allow for port 80 only. I can do that, right? But since here, I need to allow two port 80 and 480 and 3389. I'm saying it, put everything to be allowed. Now, rest of the things I'm going to, I can put my name here. This is to allow my traffic. I'm saying it allowed inbound and then click on add. This is going to create a rule for me. And now the rule is created, right? I'm allowing anything anywhere for this is not that recommended uh, rule to give it any, any here, but for this demo section, I'm giving it any, any. Now let's do one thing, go it back to your RDB file and try to access that VM again. I'm again that same RDB file, which I downloaded, I'm trying to connect it now. This implementation of the rule will take some time to come in a picture, right? Because we just implemented. I this floating IP. So destination is allowed for any protocol, any destination, any port, right? Let me just download that RDB file. You can simply go in a connect here. Back to your VM. Just set your virtual machine. You have that app VM, click on there, connect. Download that RDP file here. It's downloaded. Now open this file. Try to connect now. See, now I got the pop-up here. 
because I allowed that role. Now I got the pop up. Let me log in inside my. So password is fail. I must be typing here. Two, three. Sorry, I forgot the password. Anything. Share AZ admin three four. What will be the easy admin? Okay, I can reset my password here. I can come here and I can reset my password. I mean, I put some password there and I am not able to log in inside my VM because of the password code. So with password, we change that password here again. So I'm trying to log in inside my VM here. Yeah. I think it's not working. That password is not working. Something me do one thing. I quickly get that again. Once again, let me do that one thing, and then I'll going to. Let me put put a better password here, right? Easy admin. And I'll put in everything. Okay. Just give me a second. I'm just changing that name. We have name. So what I'm going to do it here, I'm going to take that VM access and from there, I'm going to deploy, enable that web services, right? And then I'm trying to access from the internet. This VM, VM got created, let me connect it. Download the RDP file. Yeah. Connect. See it admin. One, two, three. Okay. So I logged in inside my VM now. It's taking me inside my VM. Okay. Now this is my new VM, right? This is entirely a, like the we. You buy a new laptop, right? It's something like that, right? 
I bought a new virtual machine and now I can do my steps, what steps I want to do it here. Now, what I'm going to do it here, I'm going to configure a web server services here, right? From that server manager. Let just VM to be uploaded here, load it here. It's a fresh new VM, right? You can see that a window 10 I server opted for Windows server. So the server manager is loading it here. Until the time it is happening, let me allow that port on the NIC because this time I just allowed that needed port. We also need to have that port 80 to be allowed there, right? So go in a setting, inbound, create a rule, source as in any, port as in any, service as in now 80. We are going to allow that HTTP service, right? We are going to allow that HTTP port 80 service. And then any, then name you can put that allow port 80 because my rules which I'm going to configure it, right? It's going to be configured on port 80. At okay, now port 80 allowed for anywhere from anything. Let's go to VM again. Click on add roles and feature. This is what I'm going to do it in my web role, web service access configuration. This is very simple, nothing to do it like just opt for web server IS role. It's going to add that feature. Next, next. Next, next again, and then stall that role. This will take a minute or two to stall that role. After this, right, once the role will get stalled, what I'm going to do it here from my local laptop, right? Or I can put that IP in the chat. You guys can even try, right? And then try to access that if you're able to see that web page. With the public IP of virtual machine. So once this role will get installed, right, which is that web server role, right? So what I'm going to do it here first, I'm going to test it out from the VM's private IP. So if I'll go back in my role, right, in that overview section, you are seeing two IPs, one as in private, one as in public, right? Just go there in that private. So one as in private, one as in public. This is my VM. This is my public VM access, right? This is public VM IP. And the same time, you're also seeing that private IP, right? Since I inside that VM, right? The role where I'm configured is it is inside my VM, right? Now role got stalled. What I'm going to do it now, I'm going to take that IP for private IP, right? And then we'll try to access it from server. Let me put that HTTP because that has been configured on HTTP, right? I'm not going to opt for this one. HTTP, then backslash, backslash, put that IP is there. See, now I'm getting that web page access here, right? Now, if I'll try that, I need to access this from the internet. Locally, this web server is working, right? No issue with the web server, this is working. If I'll take that public IP, and even if I put that in a chat, right? You guys can also try to access that. You guys can hit that and see if you are able to access that because I allowed every IP is there, right? And if I do that HTTP backslash, see what is getting blocked here, right? 
it's not coming yet but the private ip the web server which we put it there it's working it is working at the web server level but not coming it here see you finally got that no it's still loading it right so let's go there in the app. Cloud environment, one second, let me just hide that. And see something is getting blocked at the NSG or not. Right, open that app setting, app PM. Okay, this put it is, let me add a rule here. And test in any, so I'm seeing it. Okay. Okay. Okay, allow action right. is that priority of the role was yeah let me delete this tool for a while so this is what happening it right at that local environment or that windows server level this service is working right see and i can do one more thing here i'll do i'll create one let me create a notepad file and I'll host my application there, right? I'll host my front end, like the way you see it, right? Let me open this and I'll do some basic coding on HTTP here, HTML. I'm saying it H1 here, adding. This is my, so that we'll get to know if my VM is working fine, right? This is my app VM here. So again, this heading closed and I'll save this as in default dot dot html where inside my c drive my window inet pub dub 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 root all files inside my i'll place that root here right now if i'll do one thing here right after that if i'll put that default dot the HTML. See, this is that. This is my RPM, right? I'm getting that response from my RPM. Now let's go there. The rule is added now. Let's go and access that rule from that public IP of VM. Copy that public IP again. Go in a virtual machine. Copy that public IP and do access here. Now it is coming, right? I can do another thing. I can go to a specific page there, default.html, and we'll see. See, my VM from that internet is also working. Even you can try that, you can see that, right? So that's what we done with the demo. We done with this practical uh, demo section where we, a person on the internet, via internet is trying to access the services configured on the VM. The same way, right? In the real scenarios, you'll be seeing that services configured on your VM. So we are going to access that via here, right? Now the written communication is happening it to this user. And this person is seeing that this is my RPM response, which I just created a HTML page and configure it there. Right? So I think this is done. This is, this is all from my side. As in uh, demo section, we can start that QA section. If you guys have any questions, right, please feel free to ask.